All right, guys, so I'm Christian, your host, and up next, I want to introduce you to our speaker for today, Ryan White. Ryan is a seven-figure digital entrepreneur, influencer, investor, press contributor, and speaker. He founded the globally recognized social media marketing company called Social Revelation, which helps businesses and personal brands increase their digital footprint and brand awareness online. His company manages the social media strategy for several seven to eight figure earners who are top performers within their industry. And he has curated a personal online network around 500,000 people from all over the world. Ryan has also been featured on the award-winning podcast, Entrepreneurs on Fire, hosted by John Lee Dumas, and on the live television show, Good Morning La La Land in West Hollywood. So welcome, Ryan. Thank you, Christian, for having me. Absolutely. So I'm really excited to jump in today because we're going to be talking all about your journey to where you are now. Perfect. That so sounds amazing. To start off, um, tell us who is Ryan White? How has your path unfolded and what's your journey looked like? Yeah. So again, I'm Ryan White. I come from small town Lakeland, Georgia, uh, in Southeast Georgia, from a very small town of about 3,300 people. So a lot of people don't know this, but you know, when they ask me where I'm from, I have to say Atlanta, Georgia or Macon, Georgia, because Lakeland is so small, although there's about a two to three hour gap in between there. But anyway, I graduated from a very small town. Both my parents, you know, were in education. And so I actually went to college in Tennessee. Everyone kind of knew me from my baseball persona because baseball was a huge part of my life. And so that was what I was doing. I actually graduated college in 2012. And from 2013 to 2017, I was actually a private baseball instructor until I kind of launched this company on the side, um, kind of initially as a hobby um, in March of 2017. And then now it's kind of in, in 2018, uh, we actually kind of stepped 100% full time into this and kind of grown it into what it is now today. Wow. So that was a pretty quick turnaround. It was very, very, very fast. Yeah, we're very fortunate and blessed uh, to kind of get to where we are in such a short amount of time. That's awesome. So explain to me, like, what was that journey? What did that look like going from being a private baseball instructor to doing the social media marketing? Right, for sure. So aside from kind of just training kids, I was placed over the social media marketing campaign of the company I was working for called Five Star National. And, you know, I was over like fan gear, you know, the Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, those sorts of things. And, you know, as I kind of worked through this, I realized I was, I was able to kind of get really good results for this marketing company or not marketing, excuse me, the baseball academy that I was working for. And I got to thinking to myself, if I can do it for them, why can't I do it for me? And so just thinking through this whole, you know, being competitive, trying to be the best version of myself and wanting to kind of go and create something in a personal brand, I started spending all of my free time kind of outside of instruction, just doing research and, and focusing on how can I go and duplicate what I'm doing for Five Star National with myself. And so it was really this whole period of, of kind of just me working late at night, honestly, till midnight. Um, I mean, I would get done instructing at 8 p.m. and I'd spend from 8 p.m. to midnight literally just trying to research, you know, people who were killing in, in the influencer industry, like on Instagram, doing all the, all this research, and then just split testing those ideas on my own personal page until eventually, you know, when you invest that amount of time into something, I stumbled across something that worked very, very well. And naturally, I kind of gained attention through that. So I think at one point, and, and I've mentioned this before, but I was growing my personal brand like 10,000 new followers per month just on the Instagram platform. So naturally, you know, it gained attention from people and they were all kind of hitting me up and, hey, what are you doing? Who, or who are you kind of reaching out to to get this done? And I was like, I'm actually doing this myself. Um, it's taken a lot of time of just kind of hours being put in to kind of split test this stuff, but I think I can do it for you too. And so it got to this period of where I was just kind of hustling the whole thing. You know, hey, I'll do it for free. Give me five bucks, 10 bucks, 30 bucks a month. And, it, and, and my whole you know, mindset behind it was, you know, I wanted to see if, if it would work, you know, for across all industries, not just myself. And so at the time, um, my girlfriend, which is now my fiance, you know, I, she was kind of my first kind of trial and error period. And I noticed very quickly that it was, you know, the results I was getting for myself, I was getting for her. 
And so it was just cool because every single person who come to me, I was able to kind of help and they were able to benefit. And then there was just this period of where I was putting everyone that worked with me in this telegram group. And then after about a period of three months, I noticed that I had about a hundred people in this group. And so it was kind of at that moment where I realized that I had enough value to just trademark a business. Oh, that's awesome. It's, it's really nice how things kind of work themselves out for you. Especially yeah, when you're just kind of like experimenting. Exactly. So I tell a lot of people all the time because they're like, when did you have the idea to go and start a social media marketing company? And I tell people it actually kind of fell into my lap, you know, um, it just massive action kind of with vision and just wanting to kind of be the best version of yourself. Typically the stars tend to align if you're willing to kind of put that time in. And that's what I tell people like, you don't have to have, cause I didn't know that I was going to start a social media marketing company. You know, I just started doing something. I had this vision of, I knew I could be better, but I didn't kind of have structure as to how to get there. I didn't have a plan. I just started doing. And then because I started doing everything kind of fell into place. Yeah. I like that. Um, so what would you say the most important thing through that journey would, um, would be as far as like, like you said, you just started doing, like what helped you to just make that decision? Was there anything specific that pushed you that gave you the, the drive or was it just like, let's just see what, it, what happened? <laughs> Right. So, you know, from an early age, um, I just remember telling people too, I've kind of always had this business mindset, um, you know, growing mm -hmm. up in sports and whatnot, I've always had a competitive kind of nature about me, you know, as you spend a large majority of your life through college baseball competing, you know, once I kind of got into or, or my playing career stopped, I had to invest that competitive nature in something. And so I, it was kind of a combination of me knowing I would always kind of be a business owner at an early age mixed with the competitive nature and just kind of reflecting at night on, okay, based on what I'm doing right now in my current situation, like back in 2017, am I, basically reaching my full potential. And although I was doing something that I was passionate about, the answer to that question was no, I knew I could be doing more. And not that I was ashamed of what I was doing, because I loved it, you know, and I loved the people that I was working with. And I loved, you know, impacting kids lives, literally, and helping them get college scholarships. The testimonies, you know, that I was getting from that was was grateful. But it was more for me, you know, I know I can make more than the fifty, sixty thousand $60,000 a year that I'm making, which don't get me wrong, is, is a good, you know, that's a good salary for majority of Americans. But in terms of just my vision of myself and what I knew that I could do and kind of where I wanted to go, I knew there was something more. So I think just the fear of not reaching that potential is kind of eventually what pushed me into actually going after it. Uh, so we're talking about fear. I love that you just brought that up. How did you, <clears throat> what was the biggest way, or should I say, how did you push past the fear? Was it, um, like, did you have a mentor? Was there anyone that you were following who just kind of inspired you? Yeah, for sure. So, you know, I'm a big Grant Cardone, Grant Cardone advocate. I listen to a mm -hmm. lot of his stuff. You know, he, he, if you have heard one of his things, you've heard, you know, him, he just beat into massive action and, you know, setting goals high and, you know, it is our responsibility and duty to be successful. And so I think, you know, just kind of as I was podcasting and listening to him and reading his audio books, I think a lot of that resonated within me. Um, and it just kind of manifested even more what I was already feeling. So, you know, so when you already have these feelings and then you're listening to someone telling you to do massive action, you know, that, being successful is your, your duty and responsibility. Those are, those are pretty impactful things that's entering your life. And so I think that just manifested large enough inside of me that, you know, regardless of my fear, you know, I knew that I had to push past that if I wanted to get to where, you know, I kind of saw myself being in the next five to 10 years. And so, you know, I, there's a quote that people say um, that, you know, people staying inside their comfort zone it's a lot harder for them to kind of be successful, right? So it's this whole kind of persona and this whole vision of, you know, no one ever got rich or famous or became successful by staying inside their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So because of that, that one little quote in that line, although I was kind of uncomfortable, I knew I had to step out of that comfort zone in order to reach full potential. So that's initially kind of what, what pushed me. That's great. Grant Cardone is a, uh... Really Very great. Powerful. Yeah, he is. 
Um, I listen to a lot of his um, stuff too. I follow him on Instagram, especially catching those live talks. I think it's really helpful when budding entrepreneurs find people who are influential, who, who have that message that kind of really gets down deep and makes you want to work. Um, I, I know one of the things that I tell everybody is like, if you're not listening to a podcast or if you're not following somebody right now, who's like, doing what you want to do like you're missing out (laughs) a hundred percent i couldn't agree more with what you just said i tell people that all the time um probably for me you know the biggest takeaway if someone's asking me like how do i get to where you are and how do i you know what's one piece of advice if you had to give it to me right now what would it be it would be to get involved in some form of podcasting or at least try to read an audio book you know over the course of a day or two. Um, and it, cause it's just bringing, you know, motivation and that positivity into your life. And you have to have that, you know, in order to have enough courage, you know, to be able to defeat fear and, and, and want to push forward and be the best version of yourself. You have to have positivity flow into your life. Yeah, definitely. So I have a question. No, your, your path to success thus far has been pretty like phenomenal, but what would you say to someone who says, well, my life doesn't look like that. And I have all of these things going on and my kid or my husband is sick with a debilitating illness. Like, what would you say to them? I would say that, you know, we all have our own struggles. Um, You know, a lot of people don't know this about me. Um, I don't ever think I've even mentioned it in an interview before, but if you go all the way back, even before I got into baseball, you know, I graduated college in 2012 had an accounting degree. Matter of fact, I kind of got thrown into an accounting degree because one of my advisors kind of pushed me that way because I was really good in mathematics, but I really had no passion or desire to become an accountant. And so what's crazy about it is, you know, I did actually two different internships with public accounting and hated it. So now, you know, you're looking at a kid who just, you know, spent $30,000, $40,000 in student loan debt, has this degree and in, in a field, you know, that he doesn't even enjoy doing. And so in order not to go into accounting, I went and worked for Tennessee State Bank. It was the first job out of college. Uh, So I have a bachelor's degree. 2013, I am working at Tennessee State Bank in Jefferson City, Tennessee as a bank teller. Okay, I'm making $11 an hour. A lot of people don't know this about me. And so, and I remember I worked there for six months because those six months of my life, going back to that just whole, I knew I could be doing something more. I just beat myself up, you know, I'm sitting there and I did it because I'm like, okay, it was kind of that moment where, okay, baseball's over, you know, the college, the college party lifestyle's over, you're entering the real world, you have a degree, it's time to go get a job. And so I went and worked at the, basically the first person or the first company, if you will, that basically said yes to my resume. Mm-hmm. And so here I am, you know, clocking in on a Friday at 730 in the morning to basically run their drive through as a bank teller, making $11 an hour. And I did that you know, again, for six months. And I just remember every day that I went in, I was like, this is terrible. Like, is, is this what I'm going to do? I remember, I remember sitting there one day cause you couldn't have your phone, you know, behind the counter. Um, I mean, I, it was to the point where I was having, you couldn't be on the computer, you know, cause they have all these restrictions on what you can do at a bank. And so there's no internet, there's no phone, you know, I'm 21 years old, 22 years old at the time. And so I'm literally drawing in a coloring book and doing crossword puzzles as I'm waiting on the next person to come through. And I just remember going, wow, man, am I going to retire in this? Is this what the rest of my life looks like? Like are the better moments of my life behind me and I'm 21, 22. And it was, I mean, it got kind of pretty dark there for a minute, honestly. I remember calling my mom and I was just, I mean, literally, I mean, I was crying at one point in time and I was just like, I have no idea what I want to do with my life. You know, I have all the student loan debt, baseball, which has been my entire world, you know, I, coming from a small town and, you know, even getting a chance to play division two college baseball, I was kind of a big fish, small pond. So I always kind of had things go my way. I mean, even my father was my high school baseball coach, if that tells you anything. So we, I mean, just in our community, we were known by everybody. So now you go from that to here I am making $11 an hour, hating my life, if you will. And my mom was like, we got to get you out of Tennessee. You got to come home. And so I moved back in with my parents again at 22 years old so you want to talk about a come up story 22 years old i'm moving my stuff back into my parents house after being over 400 miles away through through my college career and that was a that was that was tough you know that was a tough pill to swallow and uh luckily i got a break you know five-star national um 
kind of knew what I had done and uh, I had a friend who kind of introduced me to them and was like, dude, why don't you come do the private instruction? And I will say, you know, that was the turning point of my life where I kind of got out of the funk, didn't know what I wanted to do. Now I was able to kind of get back into the baseball world. And for, you know, from 2013 to 2017, those four years, four or five years, you know, was, was impactful and it got me back on my feet. It got, it got me back in touch with who I was as a person. It got me back in that competitive nature. It got me out of that dark place I was in. And again, then all the things that go back to the childhood and the competitive just kind of manifested again. And I, I built myself back up to where in 2018, I'm stepping in full time into a company that kind of landed in my lap that I'd built basically with my hands by myself because now don't get me wrong. I definitely am thankful for my team and my partners because no, sh you know, there's not a doubt that I wouldn't be here without those guys. Okay. A hundred percent. I scaled to how fast, you know, or to where I am as fast as I did because of those partners. But in essence, if you go back to, it's just crazy. Truthfully, like when I start talking with someone like you on just how dark of a place and how low I was in life at this point and literally four to five years later, it's like I'm riding the biggest high of my life. You know what I mean? At 28 years old. Now people tell me they're like, dude, it is amazing. Like, you know, you drive, you know, a hundred thousand dollar plus car at 28 years old. It's crazy what you're doing. And, you know, I try to not forget where I come from because I just remember very recently in the back of my mind where I was at that moment in time. And I think that's why I get up every day and I continue to push and push and push because I don't want to go back there. That is very powerful. Uh, it's extremely motivational. I think a lot of people needed to hear that because where you come from, it does, it can make or break you. Some people allow their past to hinder them and to keep them down, whereas others will use it to push them and propel them forward to achieve dreams, to get out of where they are currently. A hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. I'm glad you actually brought that up. Cause like I said, that's the first time I've, I've actually went on air out of all the shows and podcasts that I've done. I've actually never mentioned that. So a lot of people that kind of see me, they only see, man, you were a private baseball instructor, you know, living a life that you loved. Now you're over here and, you know, you're making seven figures through your business in two years. Like you've always had it good, but they, mm -hmm. you know, I've never taken it back far enough until now to where I had a low period just like everyone else. And so to go back to your question on, you know, what if I have all these outside factors? So, you know, I'm in a different situation. Well, no, you're not, because I've been there too. Just everybody's on their own path and their own journey, and they have their own trials and tribulations. You just have to figure out a way to push forward. Exactly. I love it. Love it. So we're talking about your business. Let's get into that a little bit more. So what is it exactly that you help your clients do? So the biggest thing in layman's term I tell people is we help um, personal brands and businesses just generate more exposure through digital platforms, more importantly, social media. So the, the business was built kind of around Instagram. And so, you know, if you're a music artist or a model or a DJ here in Atlanta, um, you know, we can take people like that and try and expose those to people within, you know, their, their target audience base or their niche through Instagram, right? So it's just basically taking our client, their target audience, and, and, and kind of being the bridge between that gap. We can kind of do the same thing with, um, with brick and mortar companies. So, you know, we have a chiropractor, for an example, in Tampa, Florida, and we actually will geo-target within about a 60-mile radius of his headquarters. And so, again, it's just really, it's as Grant's going back to Grant, you know, it's going back to helping people defeat this problem that we have of obscurity, right? So if nobody knows we exist, you know, they can't buy from us. And mm -hmm. so I basically use digital means, social media, to kind of go through and help you deliver your message to the world. That's awesome. So I like that you basically, you're like you said, you're bridging the gap because um, sometimes entrepreneurs don't know how to reach their target audience. They have this amazing idea and they know where they want to be in the end, but they have no idea how to get there. And a lot of that has to do with creating that connection and getting clients because you're not going to get to the end or to scaling if you're not creating that connection, you know, connection 100%. is currency. That's what my mentor has always told me. Yep. A hundred percent agree with that as well. That's good stuff. Um, and, and I think that's why, you know, we've had so much success because again, 
you know, we're in the business of helping people, you know, the more people that I help grow their audience base and the more businesses I help increase, you know, their bottom line, they're going to go out and tell people, right. And refer people. And it's just a continuous cycle. And so, you know, I, I was told, you know, by my, my mentor, you know, obviously the bigger, the problem that you can help solve, you know, the bigger, the more money that you're going to make, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that is, like you said, a pretty big problem that most business owners and entrepreneurs have is really, you know, well, I have a great idea, but where are those people who would be interested in my idea? And so social revelation kind of comes in and, and, and helps solve that problem. That's awesome. Now, do you help entrepreneurs kind of figure out what their need, what their niche is, or do you just help them? Like you're taking people who already have their audience and just connecting them? Um, so it can kind of be twofold. We can kind of do a combination of both. Um, we do custom plans for people all the time. So if you were to come to me and you go, Hey, I have this great idea, but I have really, you know, no idea how to get started. Then we can kind of go, okay, it sounds to me like this would be the best route. So we can advise you and then basically cater your strategy with social revelation based upon that conversation. But it, you know, again, I would say a large majority of our people, like for instance, you know, online boutiques, who sell online, they have a clear audience base, you know, mm -hmm. so they come in, they know exactly who they're trying to hit. And they're just basically leveraging our system and our infrastructure and our team to go out and connect with the people who would be willing to buy from their boutique. And so, you know, they naturally see an organic increase in their website traffic um, once joining us and then their bottom line financials, you know, as they're selling more product online. So I think that's probably the best, the best answer for that. Awesome. So what is like your best advice for people who are starting their journey or maybe they're at a point where they are like plateauing and they're trying to figure out how to scale? What is your best advice, something that they could do like today and like see results? Right. So the biggest thing probably for me, I would say massive action and then trying to rank up. And so by rank up, I mean, you know, study the industry, figure out who is in your space, who's doing what you're trying to do, right? The people that are already doing exactly or are where you want to go. And then, you know, reach out to those people. A lot of times we feel like we're not big enough. And so we kind of go into our shell and we're too afraid to kind of reach up to someone who's already killing it. Um, and I'm a prime example that this works because I get reached out to by people every day in my Instagram DMs who honestly, you know, I get bombarded with hundreds of messages every day, but I try to go through and filter through and people who are legitimately reaching out to me for advice. I usually, I, I pick at least three people a day that I stop what I'm doing and I respond and give them credible advice. So my point is, is if they never would have, you know, took action and, or reached out to someone like me, then they never would have had the opportunity to kind of hear what I had to say. So, and it kind of the same thing goes for me. You know, I, I'm always trying to go and kind of rank up as well. You know, I don't know if you've ever heard of the 33% rule, but they say, you know, you should try to spend 33% of your time people above you from your current situation. So that for me, obviously, I'm, I'm not on Grant Cardone or Tony Robbins or Andy Frisella or Ed Milet status yet, but I will be soon. But my point is, is I could try to level up. And even if I can't directly talk to those people individually, I at least need to be, you know, on their newsletter, you know, following their Instagram channel, reading their audio book. If they put one out, if they have a podcast interview anywhere that they've ever done, I need to be going after that stuff because although I'm, I can't talk to them directly like you and I right now, mm -hmm. I can still learn from him through information he's putting out through other channels. Right. And then at the same time, you're constantly trying to mastermind and, and get them on a phone call, right. Or, or reply to an email. But the point is, is you can still learn from those people, although they don't directly hit you back. Okay. And then the other, you know, 33% is we, we should try to hang out with people on our same level, right. To mastermind and throw and bounce ideas off one another. Hey, what are you doing in your life? This is what I'm doing. And you're kind of in the same kind of category and stage of life. Mm -hmm. So you, it, it's just always good to have someone that you can talk to who understands what you're doing and where you're at like right now. And then the other 33% is people below you. So that we're kind of, it's this whole idea of we're giving back, you know, you know um, we were all kind of below, on the bottom, you know, step of the ladder at some point in our lives. And so it's this whole idea that we should spend 33% of our time with people who can learn from us. Right. So it was, and, and that knowledge base is just kind of flowing down. So as you're ranking up, you're getting kind of fed stuff, you're masterminding with people on your same level. And then that information is you're, you're inspiring and you're motivating and you're giving back to people below you to help them get to where you are. So 
that's something I learned recently that I've got that's kind of really manifested and took a hold with me. I love that. It's basically like practicing generosity. A hundred percent. Yeah. So when you do that, um, whether you believe in God or karma or anything like that, you, you, exactly. you give what you get basically. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So let's kind of like wrap this up into like a couple of sentences. Let's say, give me your like quick elevator pitch. Like this is what you got um, for out of this talk today. Yeah. So the, so the biggest thing is, you know, no matter where you're at, um, I would just say self-reflect, figure out, ask yourself the tough questions. Am I where I want to be? You know, um, if you were like me and you were that 10 year old kid who dreamed big, you know, then when you ask yourself, like I, like I did, you know, a few years ago, are you where you want to be? Just get real with yourself. And the answer to that, if the answer to that question is no, then I would challenge you to not let outside factors, you know, your current nine to five job, you have kids, you got to take care of this person or that person or the timing's not right. Throw all that aside. And I would just say, at least start taking action now. You know, even if it's a very, very small step in your mind, it's those small stepping stones, right? As we look back over time, we kind of see how far we've came. And so I talk about this all the time, but the snowball on top of the mountain, it can never gain momentum, right? If we never give that initial push. So although as small as it may seem, you know, I would just say, if you have a vision, you have a passion, you have a dream of something you want to do starting like today, when you get home from your job, cause I had a full-time job when I started this. Okay. As some, you know, I was, I was doing this as a side gig and I didn't even really know what I was doing. I would just call a spade a spade. I stumbled across it. And now it's turned into what it is today. And, you know, it's created financial freedom that I never, never, never really thought I, I would be able to achieve, especially at the age that I'm at. So the biggest takeaway of all of this is it doesn't matter where you are, where you start, just do something because that something is going to be enough momentum to push the ball, you know, down the mountain. And as it starts going down the mountain, you just need the momentum. You just need to get the ball rolling. Once the ball gets rolling, it's going to pick up like a snowball. It's going to build momentum. And the next thing you know, you're going to look back and you're going to be sitting on one of these interviews telling your story and how you got started. So. Awesome. That's great. Thank you for wrapping that up. So nice for us. Um, so before we go, I just want to say thank you so much for being here today. Um, your talk sure. has been enlightening, super inspirational. Um, I think our viewers are going to take a great deal out of this today um, and hopefully be inspired to really like take some action. Um, yes. So how about we just, how about you tell everybody like where they can learn more about you and what offer that you have for them today? Yeah, for sure. So uh, if you want to just check out my website, it's just www.officialryanwhite.com. Um, you can find me and connect with me on Instagram. My handle is just at Ryan White. So R-Y-A-N-W-H-I-T-E. Um, and again, we have an offer for you guys. So if you are interested in kind of diving more and learning more about Instagram and just kind of mastering the whole course and, you know, you, you are really interested in kind of getting more growth out of Instagram, maybe even monetizing the space into a six, seven figure income, then we just dropped a brand new Instagram mastery course actually on January the 1st. And you can actually check that out and pick that out up at officialmasterycourse.com. Awesome. So there you have it. Um, hopefully you all have enjoyed my special interview with Ryan White, all about his journey to where he is today. And it's amazing um, the type of growth he got in 18 months, right? Yep, 18 yeah. months. Um, so I want to make sure that you guys get your hands on this amazing offer uh, just below this video. I can't wait for you to put it into action in your own business. Thank you so much for being here with me. I cannot wait to connect with you on the next episode of the Rewrite Summit. Bye. Bye. See you guys.